right, here we go. <laughs> this is how you're going to hear me preach today. No, you're not. Good morning, church. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. All right, now I say good morning. All right, by way of the bulletin, get one. Okay, that's the best way I could I could tell you. Um, Mike and Brenda are in New, New Jersey, and then we're going to put them on a two-week quarantine. Um, other no, I'm fine. Oh, I could have a two-week quarantine from the nursing home. That would be good. Uh, everything that you need to know is in the bulletin. Pam is going for her uh, procedure on Wednesday, and she's very trepidatious about that, which I understand. If they came on my face, I'd be trepidatious, although if they made an improvement, that would be good. Um, so we want to remember uh, Pam and uh, Alice. You doing all right? All right. How's your singing voice? <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Alice was diagnosed with pleurisy, so that has to hurt a little bit. Um, so, all right. Other than what's in the bulletin, that is it. Um, so, I'll turn the services over to Larry, and we will proceed from there. Over his gates with thanksgiving. <laughs> Can you please stand for this election? <laughs> yeah, we will sit down after this. Week. <laughs>
Heavenly Father. Almighty Father in Heaven, we thank you so much for another beautiful day of life. We thank you for protecting us in these times of uncertainty, especially with what's going on the world over. We thank you that our governing forces in this nation are doing their best to look out for us. You know it's very inconvenient to us, but it preserves us. Thank you for that. Please go with us during this worship period that we're together, and please accept our praises to you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> We may not have a way to be crucified and center our attention on the Lord's Supper at this time. Each first day of the week, we can observe it as Christ's life. We remember that death and burial and resurrection. From the first Genesis 3, from the first generation of mankind, Christ knew and set this plan up for this memorial that we have today. Through the years, as constantly talked about the fullness of time, there in Isaiah 53, all the details of Christ's life, the crucifixion, the resurrection, everything. 
everything was laid out uh, five to seven hundred years ahead of time, Rome was not even a ruling power, it's not a nation at that time. So how many battles and how many plans for a nation to come into power had to take place? How much planning did man do so that Rome could come into power? The tree could become a symbol of crucifixion way of death, the state way of death. It's like years everything had to just fall in place just to put Rome in power or something. Crucifixion is a way of death for things to work out as it had been predicted so many hundred years before. Now as we look In the pew, I can always get down and his fingers broken and so I'm in Let's look to the Lord again. Our Heavenly Father, how these things could happen, everything come together as it was predicted. Just more than we can conceive. Everything was foretold. Christ was willing to come. Blood was shed upon the cross as our behalf as humans. We thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
church did in the first centuries as we are instructed to be cheerful heart to give some the word of God. Christ can be spread, the expenses can be covered. here to live in this nation. Have jobs to take part in the prosperity of it. We thank you, Lord, for that plan for the peace that you have given us. We thank you for the many years, the many sacrifices to keep this nation going. The ancestors people in force, the church doors open, like the word of Christ is, is instructed to do the same way as Christ was predicted and foretold. The church is the business of it and the instructions for it have been laid out centuries before and made properly in God's sight. Keep that coming, I pray. And we praise you in Jesus' name.
<laughs> you have to take it all the way up to the top. Um, while we're waiting for him to get that up there, um, our sermon this morning is going to be short, sweet, to the point, because following our sermon, we're going to be talking about uh, David Z, who was here last week. And uh, we had a very good meeting with, <clears throat> excuse me, a meeting with him uh, Sunday afternoon after our lunch. And uh, we'd like to present him to the congregation uh, for consideration. So, we have just celebrated the 4th of July, our independence from Britain. And I think it's 242 years. The birth, 44? All right. I know on our 200th anniversary of this nation, I was in the service. And I had the watch that day, all day. What'd you do? Lose it? Oh, we're good? Okay. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about independence. But we're also going to make it a twist. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John 15, 1 through 5. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You may be seated. We're all familiar with this document. Has anybody ever see, seen it in the Library of Congress? Okay. I know it's under glass and it's bulletproof. Mm -hmm. And if you've watched, uh, what was the, uh, oh, National Treasury. Uh, it was featured in, in that movie. But this is one of the most important documents in our nation, and it is actually considered a sacred piece of paper. That's why it's guarded so closely. But it was also the birth of a nation of the 13 colonies that was signed by 56 signatures or legislators over much, much debate. Um, one of the uh, 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 musicals that my wife and I love to watch is 1776, and I think it's very well done. And uh, the gentleman who played uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Frank Silva, I believe is his name, or Howard Silva, uh, was uh, also in the musical on Broadway. Um, but anyway, the actors that portrayed these characters did, did an excellent job, especially in debating issues. But because of this, they were actually declaring their independence from their king. They were breaking away, and they were declaring their freedom from tyranny. As, as we read throughout the history books during the Revolution, this is what it was all about. Uh, unlawful taxation, etc., cetera, from, from the motherland. So they're breaking away, they're breaking a bond. And anytime you break a bond, it's gonna be difficult, it hurts. So, with that, the freedom that came from that changed everything. It changed their lives, and it changed the world. But it came at a very, very high cost. In researching this, there was about 20, over 25,000 who were killed during the Revolutionary War. Of course, when we compare that to other wars, especially the Civil War, that freedom came at a very high cost, too, over over 50,000, just in one battle, over 50,000. So we know that freedom comes at a high cost. But our freedom from sin came at a very high cost. But we do see him who was made for a little while longer than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone, for you, for me, for your neighbor, for the person who annoys you, for the person who is actually starting riots, for the person who don't care about God, for the person who is ambivalent, 
for the criminal, for the adulterer, for the homosexual, for the drunk, for the murderer. He died for them too. As a child of God, we have actually declared our dependence. And what do I mean by that? Well, when we obey the gospel, we put Jesus on in baptism. That is saying we submit to you. Uh, we submit to the king. We're not rebelling against the king, although any time that you have a revolution, you have a rebellion. And the reason why we submit to the king was because we rebelled against our own king in sin. That changes everything. Jesus, King of King and Lord of Lords, the only king of whom all his subjects willingly serve. Now, when we were dealing with the King of England, which was George III, the revolution or the rebellion was because we did not really want to serve him anymore because of what was going on. But here, we willingly serve, voluntarily, and follow him of a pure heart not out of coercion, fear, or retaliation, but because we love him, because he first loved us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, to whom all things came and through whom we live. The creator, the sustainer, the redeemer, the savior. In Acts 4.12, we see that salvation is found in no other under heaven given to man, Jesus. And that's what we sang about this morning. Our declaration of dependence as a child of God, we are compelled to declare, one, that we believe in the Lord. Now, believing... I think this term belief has a little bit more meaning than just, yeah, I believe in him. I believe in him. It means it's a deeper, deeper faith than just, yeah, I believe in him. I think he's good. Uh, when we deal in, in, in realms of uh, in our jobs, our boss, if, if our boss is a good person and does right, yeah, we believe in him. You know, there are people that we have met in our lives that yeah, we'll do anything for because of the type of person they are. They want you to work a little extra? Yeah, sure, I'll do that for you. Uh, or a neighbor or a friend. But this belief goes much, much deeper. Whoops, wrong button. Whoops, another wrong button. There we go. With that declaration, we also are compelled to declare that we trust in the Lord. He's going to get us through. He is going to, no matter what happens, we believe in him and we trust in him. A declaration of independence, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. But I trust in you, O Lord. Psalms 31, 14. For I have put my trust in you. Psalms 143 and 8. With this declaration, we have declared God will be running our lives. Hmm. Hmm. I know, O oh Lord, that my life is not my own. It is not for me to direct my steps. A lot of times we ask ourselves that in times of uh, uh, uncertainty, like right now. Um, so it's like we have to contemplate what, what we're supposed to do. And I kind of attribute it to uh, Abraham. Get out of your country to a place where I'll show you. Okay. Where are we going? To a place that I'll show you. Uh, what do I take? I'll provide for you. Okay. Um, what am I going to eat? Uh, you got livestock, we'll, we'll increase that for you. Okay. You're going to be a blessed nation. You're going to be a blessing to all the world. Okay. Lord, I don't have any children. I'll take care of that. 
So it goes on and on. And as Abraham developed his uh, relationship with God, his faith grew. Because we could see him as a character study, how when he started he had faith, but then it had to grow. We've all declared our independence. Have we? Independence from what? Independence from our parents? Independence individually? Independence like don't tell me what to do? This is a free country? Yes, it is. I can say what I want? Yes, you can. I can do what I want up to a certain point. If it infringes on the rights of others, you can. As Christians, how do we really live? I think this one touches home with each and every one of us because we go about our activities of daily living. It depends on our plans, our cleverness, our talent, our persuasiveness, our hard work, our connections, our resources, our strength. We have problems and situations that develop. We want to have some resources or a talent to overcome those things. Or we go to a person that has that ability. But we have to keep in mind, where's the Lord in all this? We're declaring our dependence. He looks down and he sees everything. He knows everything, even before it's done. As a child of the king, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. I am the vine, you are the branches. The fruit of my life doesn't come from me, it comes from Jesus. He gave you everything that, that you have. Your talent, the ability, the body, the mind, the soul. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Each day's needs. So, don't worry, say, what shall we eat or what shall we drink, Abraham? Or what shall we wear? I'll take care of it for you. Put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Each day's choices. O oh Lord, lead me in a straight path. Again, our dependency. Each day's strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Each day's answers. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I put my hope. And this is where we see not only David, but kind of what Abraham did as well as he sojourned to the land of Canaan. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Our language of dependency on the Lord. But the question is, um, Prayer. Really? How often? Once a day? Twice a day? Three times a day? Four times a day? Before dinner? When I get up? Prayer is a lifeblood of an intimate relationship with the Father. We are instructed in 1 Thessalonians to pray without ceasing because praying helps us live what I believe, which is. Jesus Christ. Again, it draws us into that intimacy with Christ. Every day, in the presence of Almighty God, before you really start your day, sign your declaration of dependence to your king. You lay down on that bed, the alarm goes off. You wake up startled. If you have to go to work or school. You take a deep breath. Sign your declaration of dependence. A daily reminder, recognize, recognizing your powerless, powerlessness before an almighty and loving God. We may think we have power. We have the abilities. But we want God to direct our steps. Reaffirming your commitment to serve, relying on your King, your Lord, your Savior, your God, because that signature makes all the difference. At the end of the Declaration of Independence, or near the end, 
this statement is there. And I think I may have modified it just a little bit. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Our forefathers all agreed on this statement as well and signed it. The commitment was there because of those 56 signatures that was on this document, many of them suffered dearly, and some even died. My Declaration of Dependence. When in the course of one's life, he or she comes to themselves, and when it becomes apparent that in my flesh dwell no good thing, it becomes necessary to rely entirely upon divine providence and the glorious person of Jesus Christ. I therefore declare total dependence upon my Father's love for me and his solemn word as recorded in the Holy Writ, the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. From this moment forward, I lean upon the everlasting arms and draw my every ounce of strength from the fountain of life himself, Jesus Christ. Yet it has become readily apparent that without him I can do nothing and that all my former confidence in man and my own strength has been absolutely futile. I thus resolve to turn over my every care, my every worry, my every fear, my every frustration, and my every dilemma to the Lord Jesus, walking by faith and not by sight for the rest of my life. I declare independence from trusting in my own performance to make me right with God. I declare complete dependence upon the Lord Jesus and what he did for me on the cross as my only right standing with God. I don't know who wrote that, but it's, I think it's pretty good. So where are you? Are you independent from God? I don't need it. Um, if you see here, we have people, sin, rebellion, and separation. And that's what sin is. It's a separation. Just as we rebelled against the king of England, we wanted to separate ourselves from the motherland and start our own nation, which happened. In Christ, however, we have a dependency. We humble ourselves to his will, to his will, to what he wants us to do. And in that, we can find peace, forgiveness, an abundant life, John 10, 10, and eternal life. There. People. God. Where are you? When we read John chapter 15, the first five verses, there is something else that we have to continue because 15 is loaded with so much instruction that Jesus left his um, disciples right before he was betrayed. And if we look at verses 7 through 10, if you abide in me and my words and abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you, a matter of faith. A promise. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. He later goes on to say in verse 14, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay. But how? What am I, what am I supposed to do? I, 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 I want to know more. What, what, does, what does he want me to do? Well, most of us have taken these five steps. And today you've heard the gospel. You've heard what Jesus has done. You have to believe it. And more than just believe. Initially when you start out, yeah, I, I believe he did that. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Repent in Acts chapter 17 and 30. Change your way of thinking. Change your walk in life. Confess Christ before men. And then be baptized for the remission of your sins. But, as we see in infomercials, there is more. 
You have to abide in Christ, which means remain faithful. Your declaration of dependence, because we can't do it without him. Satan is a very strong opponent, and the only person who can defeat him, or the only person who has defeated him, is Christ the Lord. So abiding in Christ, we become more like Christ through an abiding relationship with him. If you haven't put Christ on in baptism, Galatians 3.27, we invite you to do so. If you have, but you've kind of floundered a little bit and reclaimed your independence, we invite you to claim your dependence because it is through him that we walk, that we live, and that we have our being. That invitation is extended to you now while we stand and sing. Good.
Thank you, Lord, for this amazing service that we had this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the powerful message that was presented by my dad. When we think we've got this, we've got nothing holding us back. You know that we don't, in fact, got this. You've got this. We have nothing on your amazing powers and abilities. Thank you, Lord, for all the bountiful blessings you give us, even when we keep messing up. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins, which we ask for now, because we keep messing up. Please go with us while we make a brief discussion of Mr. David Lee in the hopes that he could be there to minister 